If you are watching this video right now, then there is a high likelihood that you already know who Michael Burry is, the big short investor. And if you don't know who he is, just a quick summary for you guys. He basically predicted the subprime loan crisis back during the 2008 housing market crash. And he made a ton of money shorting these subprime loans and ended up making a fortune back during the last housing crash. And since then, he has come up with many different predictions. And this week, he basically just came out and said that we're already in a recession or there will be a recession in 2023. It doesn't really matter how you define it or when you say it started because the effect is still gonna be the same in the end. And to that point, I definitely agree with Michael Burry. And he has a very interesting prediction for 2023. And I don't know if this is gonna come true, guys. This is not even my prediction, but it's very interesting nonetheless. So I wanted to discuss it a little bit and kind of go over what might happen if his prediction for this year comes true. So he's saying that eventually at some point in 2023, the Fed is going to pivot and start cutting interest rates. And he thinks it's likely that the federal government will come out with another stimulus package because by then the economy will be in the toilet and they're gonna print more money and go back to QE and try to uh, dig everybody out of this mess. Now the Fed pivot does sound pretty realistic, but I'm not so sure about the government stimulus packages and all of that. And the reason is because the Fed has already came out and said that they plan to get their federal funds rate up near 5% and then hold it there for as long as necessary. Some people will look at that as a Fed pivot, but it's not really a pivot because they basically raise the interest rates and then once they hold them steady, then that means that interest rates are not going up or going down. It means they're just staying where they're at. And to me, that's not a pivot. It's only a pivot once they start reducing interest rates. But the thing is, they've already came out and said that they're not going to be reducing rates until inflation is under control. But here's the scary thing. If Michael Burry ends up being correct and the Fed actually does start lowering rates in 2023 and the government comes out with a stimulus package that's going to make inflation much higher than it is right now guys because a lot of people have basically said that inflation has peaked because you know now it's going down for the last couple of months and the cpi is slowly going down and don't worry everything's going to be fine but if this scenario that michael burry describes comes to fruition it's going to do the complete opposite guys you think inflation is bad now just wait until that nightmare comes true and i hope it doesn't come true because that would be awful guys and i'll tell you why it's going to be awful first of all it's going to make everything cost even more than it already does now so if you think things are hard to afford now just wait and even if there is a government stimulus package look back to how much you got last time you know people got the stimulus checks even if they came out with another thing just like that and did another six trillion dollars which would be completely insane but say they did what did the average person get you know maybe three four thousand dollars total something like that it's not enough to really turn your life around that's for sure and that three four thousand dollars is not going to go very far when inflation reaches record highs so that's the first thing the second thing is when it comes to the housing market now if michael burry's prediction comes true then likely what's going to happen is everybody who's been saying that home prices are going to go up will be right actually because in an environment where they're lowering interest rates and handing out free money. We already saw what that did to the housing market last time around. It shot things up to record highs. And if they do it again, it'll shoot things up to new record highs. But before you go and celebrate and say, well, now would be an excellent time to buy real estate then because it'll just go up. First of all, this is just a prediction from Michael Burry. There's no uh, evidence that this is going to happen, first of all. Second of all, even if it does happen, you might be able to make a lot of money quickly if you're a flipper, but people who are in it for the long run could be in big trouble, guys. And the reason is, is because look at what's happening to home prices now that all the stimulus is over, right? And let's say they do this again, like his prediction says, and home prices go up another 20% from where they're at now. 
And the problem with it is that once the stimulus is over the next time is home prices will begin to fall on levels that you've never seen before guys because the prices got to levels that we've never seen before and this stimulus cannot go on forever or indefinitely without completely destroying the country, without completely destroying the value of the US dollar. And that's why I think a scenario like this is highly unlikely to come true. But who knows, Michael Burry is a very smart guy. Anything is possible. And at the end of the day, maybe all the big wigs in the government are gonna be looking out for their own best interests and they wanna keep all their buddies rich because we've seen them do that time and time again. But this time, you know, our entire country and the value of our currency is at stake here. So I don't know if they're going to be that foolish or not. But imagine if you're somebody that ends up buying during this next theoretical housing boom. And once that stimulus is over and home prices finally go back to what they're really worth pre-pandemic levels, it's over, guys. Anybody who bought during that time frame will be wiped out financially forever. In fact, I would be surprised if you'll even be able to get mortgages or appraisals coming in at th those new prices because it would just be next level insanity, really, if you ask me. So that's why I think the situation is so unlikely because it sounds unbelievable. Man, this tree, you can smell these flowers from like a mile away, guys. It is just beautiful and smells like heaven. Very cool. Now I definitely hope with all my heart that this prediction does not come true because this is not gonna end well for anyone except for really smart home flippers that were able to cash in and out at the right time. And people are gonna make a lot of money off of the fools who will jump in and think that this is gonna last forever. The sickest part of all of this, guys, is that if this were to happen, then the government and the Fed and all of our institutions as we know it are gonna lose all credibility forever because what they're saying, if they go ahead and do this, is that we will do anything to prop up our economy, whether it means devalue our currency to Zimbabwe levels, whether it means go to the next world war, whether it means destroy our country from the inside out. Because if that happens, then they have essentially proven that they cannot be trusted whatsoever. And I think all hell will break loose, to be quite honest. On my walks, I'm always hoping to run into a real estate listing that just makes sense. But it seems like that's basically impossible. This house was bought back in 2013 for 935000 It was likely one of those houses that was bought and sold just for the land. And then they built this beautiful brand new house. They thought it was worth $3 million all the way back in 2016. And yes, they've been trying to sell it since 2016. No buyers. Now today they have it listed for $4.7 million, thinking that some sort of miracle is going to happen. And so that's why I think that Michael Burry's prediction is not very likely to come true. But who knows? I could be wrong. He's a lot smarter than I am. Maybe he'll be right, guys. But... I just don't see how regular folks or really anybody at that point is going to be able to afford just to buy groceries, just to pay for their electric bill. People are already struggling with that now. Just wait and see what the world looks like if they go and do this. And it's just a recipe for disaster. The other thing that this proves is that they cannot let things be. Meaning like last time we went through this recession and regardless of how bad you think that was, and they did quantitative easing back then, they did lower interest rates and they pumped a lot of money into the economy during the last recession to get us back on track. But look how long it took to recover from that, guys. And that was with stimulus, okay? And so this time around, if they don't do stimulus, then it can take a very long time to get out of this recession. And that's probably every politician's worst nightmare and probably one of the best reasons why they might actually do this. So I put it at 50-50, I don't know, let me know what you guys think. Do you guys think that Michael Burry's prediction is gonna come true? Do you think they're just gonna let it all crash and burn? Do you think they're going to lower rates and print more money? What do you guys think is gonna happen? To me, the logical choice is to let it all crash and burn, finally let things correct and get back to a realistic level. But who knows, guys? Nothing seems to be realistic anymore these days, so anything is possible. But regardless of what we do, one thing to keep in mind 
is that this recession is global, guys. And in fact, the IMF came out recently and said that they expect one third of the entire world to be into recession this year in 2023. They're saying that the US, the EU, and China are all slowing down significantly. The war in Ukraine is hurting Europe big time right now when it comes to their economy. And China had this no COVID policy forever that really hurt their economy as well. So much so to the point where now they basically just are letting people run wild again after like three years of having this zero COVID policy because it's just not sustainable. But the scariest part of what the IMF said is that they believe the only thing that could hold all this up is if the labor market in the US remains strong like it is now and that might, might be enough to get everyone else through this recession because basically Americans will still have purchasing power is the idea and if our economy doesn't completely take a nosedive we'll be able to help other countries just like we always do right in more ways than one. So they're basically putting all their chips on the US right now, thinking that you know the job market here is gonna stay strong and we have the best chance of avoiding a recession over any other country. And for those of you who don't know, and you've probably heard me say this a million times if you watch my videos, the Fed is intentionally trying to increase unemployment right now. That is a known fact, guys. That's what they're doing. And for the IMF to come out and think that you know, unemployment's gonna remain low in the US indefinitely is a dream. It's not gonna happen. And that's why I also think that this scenario that Michael Burry is predicting is highly unlikely as well. Because as long as all these factors remain at play, the Fed will likely continue raising interest rates. But this does cause problems with the federal government as well. You know, it increases the amount of interest payments they have to pay on the national debt and it comes down to affordability for them as well. So there's so many push-pull factors at play here that we just don't know what's gonna happen. And one of the biggest contributing factors to inflation right now is employees getting pay raises. In fact, the job market has been so competitive that a lot of employers are starting to increase their employees' wages so they don't leave for another employer. Because it was reported that employees that were willing to change jobs for a pay raise, on average, got about a 7.7% .7 raise in 2022, which is respectable, but when inflation is much higher than that, or if you go by the CPI numbers is basically right there, you're not really earning any extra money. All that raise that you got is just going towards keeping up with the cost of living at this point. And it turns out people who stayed at their jobs only got a 5.5% raise. And that's prompting a lot of people to continue looking for a new job because if you can make two or three dollars more an hour at another job, you're gonna go for it. I mean, when I used to work hourly wage jobs, I would jump ship for an extra dollar, dollar fifty an hour, no problem, you know? Because extra money was extra money. And I'm sure many people are still going to be looking at doing the same thing. But once again, the problem with this is, is that a lot of these businesses are looking to increase their prices on everything, whether they sell goods or services, doesn't matter. Their method to keep up with these pay raises is to pass the cost along to the consumer. And to me, this couldn't come at a worse time. Because think about this, as we're entering this recession, Great, people are making more money at these jobs and they can keep up with the cost of living. But that's also going to be temporary because this creates the wage price spiral, which is basically when wages go up, the cost of everything goes up as well. And now you're basically right back where you started, if not even worse than before. And to top it all off, it makes inflation worse, which means it's very likely that the Fed will continue interest rate hikes or at the very least leave the interest rates high for a much longer period of time in order to bring inflation down. So in some ways, the average person can't catch a break, guys, because even if you get that raise, it's still not even gonna be enough to keep up with how much things are gonna cost because of all the inflation that it's going to cause. And if you're a business owner and you wanna raise prices on your customers at a time when a lot of people are losing their jobs and not able to afford everyday things, then you're probably gonna see your business go down, not up. When you're, when you're charging more for everything if people can't afford to come and patronize your business. So to me, this is gonna have 
all kinds of effects that we haven't even seen yet, but they're gonna start showing up into 2023. But when you look on the opposite end of the spectrum, if anyone knows who Jim Rickards is, he is a longtime veteran in the financial markets, and he's been through a lot of these ups and downs. And he predicts that the market could see a 25 year bear market. And before you think this is impossible, it's not impossible at all. In fact, all we got to do is look back to the Great Depression, okay? If you go back and look at the, the Dow Jones and the S&P 500 charts from back during the 1929 peak before the market crashed, okay, check this out. The Dow Jones was at 65.45 in 1929, and it took a full 30 years for the market to recover to get back to that 65.45 number. Not until 1959 did it make it back, guys. So if you invested all your money into the top of the market back in 1929, it took 30 years just to get your money back. And even then, you probably were still losing because of inflation over the next 30 years. S&P 500 was the same thing. Back in 1929, it was 545, and then it didn't return back to 545 until 1958, just one year before the Dow. This could be coming next, guys. We could be seeing this 25 or 30 year period where the market just never recovers. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because some of the most common investment advice that's around the internet and on YouTube that I see all the time from a lot of even respectable people say that you just dollar cost average into index funds and you hold it for the long term and eventually when you go to retire, you'll have a lot of money. Now, that works when you have a 30 year bull market like we just saw you know, that definitely works. That strategy works all day long. But it doesn't work when you have a 30 year bear market. And that's my concern with this is because a lot of people that this is their only method for investment or retirement and that's all they do to try and better their future. If this ends up happening, so many people are gonna be completely wiped out and probably have no clue that that might happen to them on top of that because Something like this has not been seen for the last hundred years. We haven't seen anything like this since the Great Depression. Now, I personally think that we're gonna land somewhere in the middle of all this. You know, you got Michael Burry on one extreme, and then you have Jim Rickards on another extreme of where things might go with all this. I personally think it's all gonna land somewhere in the middle. You know, I think it's going to be, you know, a major correction, a major downturn for everything, but I don't see it being a 30 year bear market like Jim says. I also don't see, you know, the market shooting back up to the moon with all this potential uh, Fed rate cuts and stimulus coming either. I think it's gonna be somewhere in the middle. I keep hoping and thinking that the Fed is gonna do what they say they're gonna do and keep rates high indefinitely until inflation is squashed and whatever consequences come from that via the economy, then we'll have to deal with it. But then you have to worry about what the federal government's going to do and if they're going to produce any of these stimulus packages because if they do, then that's gonna screw everything up. But just so you guys know, when you're watching my videos, I don't have an agenda, okay? Either one of these situations pretty much sucks if you ask me. So it's not like any of this is good, but I do have a preference, you know? I, I will say that I am of the mindset that I hope things come crashing down and stay down for a while because that's gonna be the healthiest way for us to get back to a more normal economy that we saw before 2008. But as an entrepreneur, I always think that there's going to be a lot of opportunity in any type of upcoming recession or downturn. And to me, that's much better than the Fed and the government pretty much reversing all their policies and printing us into oblivion where a gallon of milk costs a hundred bucks. So I don't think that's gonna be the answer and I hope that they don't do that. But if they do go that route, I'll definitely be here giving you guys updates on what I think you can do to try and make it through that scenario. So hopefully that won't be the case, but um, if it does happen, I'll be trying to help you guys with that next. Now I wanna leave you guys with this one last tip if you're a home buyer in 2023, because like I've said before, people are going to buy and they're gonna sell no matter what's happening in the market. So if that's you, there is something that you can look into that might actually help you save some money, guys. 
and that is potentially assuming the seller's mortgage okay and i've talked about this a little bit before but basically how this works is when you buy a property if the seller has a va loan fha loan or a usda loan then there is a possibility that you might be able to assume the loan on that property and if you do the benefit is that you inherit their low interest rate the downside to this is that you have to come up with the difference between what the seller's loan is and the home purchase price so for example let's say you're looking at a five hundred thousand dollar house and the seller owes three hundred and fifty thousand on their current loan well even if you're able to assume that loan at the 350 you got to come up with the extra one hundred and fifty thousand dollars out of pocket or you have to get a second mortgage on the property and a lot of lenders are going to be very hesitant to do that in a down market like this because the second mortgage holder is in a vulnerable position in case you default and that's not a good position that any lender wants to be in right now so the reason why I'm bringing this up because if you've been smart and you've been saving and you've been diligent like I've been telling you guys and keeping your credit score high and you run into an opportunity like this you might potentially have the cash to pay the difference inherit the sellers low interest rate and their low payment and still be able to buy but the downside with this is that you're going to have to pay a higher price most likely because sellers that are actually going to be offering this to you are likely going to want a premium price just like when interest rates were low because they're saying hey I'm giving you my low interest rate so you can afford to pay more for my house so that's the flip side to all of this now I'm not saying that this is actually a really good idea but I'm saying that it's an option that might save you some money if you're looking to have the lowest home payment that's possible on your next home purchase and you don't want to wait for home prices to come down which is what I actually recommend you know I recommend you wait for home prices to come down and you pay the higher interest rate but have the lower home purchase price because then you can refinance later down the road you can always change your interest rate guys but you can never change how much you paid for the property so that's the main takeaway from this but for the people who are impatient maybe look for a property that's offering some type of seller financing that's favorable to you or possibly assuming their loan which those opportunities are probably going to be few and far between but if you're diligent and you're looking you just might find them if you guys enjoyed this video make sure you hit the bell notification down below youtube will alert you every time i publish a new video and if you don't want to wait check out my next one on the screen right over here and i'll see you in the next one